Welcome to Sustaining Australia TV, the innovative online program covering the issues and promoting discussion around the key topics which are important to your industry. Sustaining Australia TV is an innovative online news style program proudly brought to you by the Australian Food and Grocery Council. Australia's food and grocery manufacturing industry is a $127 billion industry affecting the lives of every Australian. In this episode, we look at some of the latest innovations and technological developments driving the industry forwards. We showcase the innovation and commitment of major food producers and industry partners. And we hear the thoughts of the politicians and business leaders who are shaping this country's future and the leadership role the food and grocery industry will play in it. Coming up, we hear from AFGC Chief Executive Officer Tanya Barden on the need to remain competitive with technology investment. We need to have this strong focus on investment that's going to level the playing field. It's investment not only just for productivity and efficiency, but it's also about being responsive and competitive to changes in consumer demand. We look at how science and nature each play a role in protecting our food and industry leaders and futurists share their thoughts on the role of the innovation and technology. Be more creative, more innovative as we decreasingly do the menial and the mundane and can increasingly focus on the meaningful and the humane. Whether it's sustainability, environmental protection or food safety, innovation and technology are keys to securing our industry's future. For Tanya Barden, CEO of the AFGC, it's a question of investment. Our big focus at the moment is looking at how we grow food and grocery manufacturing in this country. We want to be able to lift it from 127 billion to 250 billion over the next decade. To do that, we need to recognise that investment is really crucial. We need to have a long-term strategic approach to food and grocery manufacturing. The modern manufacturing strategy is a great start that recognises food and beverage as being a priority sector, but we want to see a lot more of that um, focus around uh, the industry as, as longer term rather than just a sort of three or four year program and measures that support investment. So to do with um, accelerated depreciation or grant programs that support the massive changes that the industry needs to make to be competitive with the right sorts of technology. In Australia, we need to have this strong focus on investment that's going to level the playing field. It's investment not only just for productivity and efficiency, but it's also about being responsive and competitive to changes in consumer demand. And that means that your production systems are more agile uh, and also being able to be resilient in the face of shocks like COVID and being able to pivot manufacturing. So technology is really crucial for the future of the industry. And in Australia, we need to make sure we've got the right policy set to support this sort of investment so we can keep really strong jobs growth and economic output growth in Australia in what's a really critical industry. Food waste in Australia costs the economy billions of dollars each year. Fermentation expert Christian Hansen plans to transfer its bioprotection success from Europe into the wider Australian food industry. Our reporter Gareth Borum got up close and personal with the good bacteria that are leading the way. It may look like just a short, sharp burst of mist on the surface of these popular grocery items, but this simple application has the potential for huge benefits to consumers and the food industry. What's in the spray is actually crucial food cultures with bioprotective effect. We put good bacteria on the surface of the food in really large numbers to outcompete the bad bacteria. And that means that the bad bacteria can't grow anymore. Slow fermentation is nature's way of keeping food fresh and safe. It's a process that has been happening for thousands of years, turning milk into yogurt grapes into wine and these specially selected cultures can help keep food fresh and safe for longer. What we're doing with bioprotection is that we're adding an extra layer of protection that wouldn't otherwise be there so we can get up to even maybe 30 plus percent of extra shelf life. 
That's particularly important for the safety and freshness of foods like ready-to-eat packaged salads, which can spoil quickly. Adding those few crucial days of shelf life, which can save the food manufacturers huge amounts of money through our distribution chain. Carly Evans is Christian Hansen's Australia and New Zealand country manager. Food waste in Australia costs the economy around $20 billion per year. That equates to around one in five bags of groceries that actually gets thrown in the rubbish bin. So it's a significant uh, and important uh, matter for the Australian food industry to address. In collaboration with Spraying Systems, Christian Hansen is bringing expertise to the Australian food industry, in particular to an array of perishable foods, from popular pre-packaged salads, fruits, smoked salmon, ham and hot dog frankfurts. The company is aiming to translate the commercial success of bioprotection in Europe into the wider Australian food industry. Based out of Christian Hansen's Denmark headquarters, senior company executives say expanding the use of fermentation and molecular biology is at the forefront of their thinking. How can we open the box and, uh, and the way of thinking of the retail industry, manufacturing industry uh, in food? And how can we bring fermentation to the next step? So it's not only in, the, in a few categories, it means expanding the use of fermentation beyond areas like the dairy industry, where the process is well established internationally. It's getting pretty obvious to everyone that consumers are worried about sustainability and food waste. And to help really address that agenda, the dairy industry is looking at freshness of the products. They're looking at the quality. And so the innovative approach is reducing the use of chemicals, food acids and preservatives. Working towards a more sustainable future for the world is central to Christian Hansen. From reducing food waste, minimising the use of precious water resources and curbing greenhouse gases. According to the company's global head of sustainability, Camilla Lurk, food waste alone could account for up to 10% of carbon dioxide emissions globally. It's devastating, right? You know, you throw one third of it approximately into the bin, and at the same time, it has such a heavy um, footprint in terms of CO2. If we can lower the footprint of the industry, we have a really, really crucial role to play in, um, in, in the whole sense of, of bringing um, you know, the, the earth on a more sustainable footing. It's all food for thought, as producers here and abroad strive for sustainability in the industry. The importance of technology and innovation was also on the minds of keynote speakers at the Australian Food and Grocery Conference in Sydney. We joined industry leaders as they discussed the challenges and the need for change. The change, in my opinion, has to be value driven, so it has to be, there has to be a purpose behind it. A change just for the sake of it looks good today, but what, is what purpose does it really serve? Those type of technology innovations, I think, um, won't last. People will see through that. Innovation is, in, I believe, in everything that you do, whether it's in the packaging that you provide, is it embracing digital advertising mediums and how you communicate with consumers, is it how you do product design and product research, all of these areas uh, have great advances. You know, technology and other things are moving so quickly. So having an end-to-end -end innovation mindset, I think is ultimately what will give you the best innovation. We really need that partnership from our suppliers as well to bring that innovation to us. I guess we're willing participants in that, but we need our suppliers to actually come and solve a, a number of these challenges for us. It's in our best interest to have industry adopting the same technology, the same standards, um, to, to collaborate and move forward. There's nothing more frustrating for a supplier that is supplying multiple retailers or customers and they all want to do something a little bit different. So technology that provides consistency, um, in, in my opinion, is, is, a, great, is a great innovator and a, and a great pathway to, to success. The ways that we've found to um, improve food safety, reduce costs and make plastic one of the most amazing materials ever. I think that same ingenuity will help us find solutions. So this is not about um, removing plastic necessarily, it's about making sure that we are closing the loop 
and finding ways to recycle plastic. I think we need to embrace things like innovation technology for things like packaging, both for being able to provide the information that people want, but also we don't want these huge packets developing just because we need to put more and more information on it. Um, and so I think this is where the whole sustainability agenda, um, uh, food safety and other things all comes together. And it's where things like innovation will make a big difference. One of the crucial areas for AFGC members involved in food production or delivery is ensuring the safety of their product. Making sure their customers can trust their hygiene and the quality of their food. As Sandy Kay discovered, for Rent-A-Kill Initial, that means taking a scientific approach, using innovation and the latest technology in a proactive approach to pest prevention and pest management. Rent-A-Kill Initial Australia is the leading partner to the food and grocery industry when it comes to pest management. The company has built its glowing reputation by reliably protecting people from pest-borne diseases. Its secret weapon? Pest Connect. Welcome to rent kill this is Jackie. rent kill Initial takes pest control incredibly seriously, particularly when it's related to the food processing and handling industry, where health, brand protection and production uptime are of crucial importance. We'll get a technician out there as soon as we can for you. With cutting edge innovation at its core, for almost 100 years, rent -a -Kill scientists and laboratories have produced state-of-the-art technology to stay ahead of the game in this sector. Pest Connect really is a groundbreaking piece of technology. And it's actually more than one piece of technology. But it's an integrated solution using the Internet of Things through our devices using real-time feedback as to incidents of pest infestations, but also giving end-to-end -end timelines and trend data around what's going on at a site, but without relying on just one visit per month or one visit per fortnight from a technician. In its essence, Pest Connect comprises traps, bait stations and monitoring units that have been developed with leading infrared and wireless technology to deliver unrivalled round-the-clock pest control protection. And it signals a massive leap forward for the industry as a whole. When you're looking at the holistic situation, what's going on at a site, getting a much, much more granular picture as to the behaviour of the pests on the site and therefore addressing those behaviours, addressing the problems, addressing some of those root causes becomes much more effective. Traditionally, pest control has been a very labour-intensive, reactive activity. Today at rent -a kill Initial, a team of biologists and scientists sit behind the technicians to develop technology that allows both rent -a kill and the customer to implement a proactive, much more effective approach to pest management. Being proactive, being ahead of the problems and addressing them early is really critical for our customers in ensuring the integrity of their supply chain and their product. The technology that we've delivered and developed largely in-house, really is at the cusp of transformation for the industry in its entirety. Mondelez International is one of the largest snack companies in the world and one of rent -a kill Initial's biggest customers. As a large food manufacturer, it's essential the company is able to protect its global brand and deliver safe products to customers everywhere. It's what they bring to the table. It's what they bring in terms of the technology. We, we could have anybody come in and do the cross-checking, but it's after the event. So the technology they're bringing and partnering with us is about getting the alerts immediately so we could act immediately. Pest Connect delivers for us a prevention measure. It gives us immediate information and not have to wait four weeks or two weeks before the next inspection of those rodent units. So we know that there is a source there that we have to act on before that source starts to hit our product. Is it more important in a food industry to have this sort of program? Oh, definitely, definitely. Food safety is crucial. Food safety is what the consumer needs to trust in, in the brand. And that's exactly the reason Rent-A-Kill Initial is in business. 
investing heavily into science and technology to ensure they're at the forefront of innovative solutions. Food and beverage manufacturers and retailers are well able to rely on the company's pest management and prevention service to protect risks to brand integrity and general consumer health. The satisfaction for me is in knowing that our people are doing a great job and that our customers are happy. Given the many possibilities for our industry when it comes to planning and delivering food for the future, it's nice to hear the views of those who make a study of prediction. Futurist Anders Sorman Nilsson joined us at Food and Grocery Australia and shared his thoughts on possibilities involving technology and innovation. So I think with the rise of robotics as well as artificial intelligence, robotics will do similar things to our brawns as human labour as artificial intelligence will do to our brains. So in other words, it will help make us more effective, more efficient. We see the rise of trends like the exoskeleton, for example, which will enable and augment humans to do the heavy lifting, for example. But equally, artificial intelligence can really help augment our brains and our cognition, be more creative, more innovative as we decreasingly do the menial and the mundane and can increasingly focus on the meaningful and the humane. So getting even closer to our customers in a data-centric but very human-centric fashion. I think sometimes the fear is that it will lead to some kind of technological unemployment as a result of actually automating certain tasks. But I think with technology, traditionally, what we have seen is that technology doesn't just replace humans whole scale, but it frequently augments us into actually thinking and act acting more strategically and getting more human-centric in our relationships with our customers. For example, in retail or grocery, you know, we don't necessarily see the whole scale loss of jobs, but we're actually seeing a redeployment of humans into new roles. So with the ATM, for example, humans were able to be retrained to be relationship-based bankers, to do offer more strategic type financial advice, etc. And in fact, in that industry, we're now seeing more people employed than ever as a result of the technology actually augmenting humans and creating new types of work. The Australian Food and Grocery Council plays a crucial role in connecting the food and grocery industry with local, state and federal politicians. Regional MPs Damien Drum and Lisa Chesters and Assistant Minister Trevor Evans shared their views on innovation and technology as we canvass those of other industry leaders. I have huge confidence for the future and I know that there's a lot of big challenges out there but I think that we should be thinking about these as big opportunities. For every single product that's been invented, we need to see a second invention that will help to find more sustainable outcomes for that product or its packaging. Well every time you have a really good look at uh, both agriculture and food processing and food production, you're blown away by where technology and how technology is moving in to the very core of food production and food, uh, and food manufacturing. So we need a whole range of food processing, uh, we need a whole range of scientists and we need a whole raft of uh, people who are incredibly skilled and incredibly gifted. The tech that we use in these facilities could also be an opportunity for us. Uh, right now, a lot of the equipment that our food manufacturers have is actually made overseas. It's made in, in Germany or it's made in the US. That's an opportunity for us where we could actually help develop the technology here in Australia that then becomes world class and an opportunity to compete at that um, at that international level. There's already some amazing inventions, research and so on under development in Australia and Aussies continue to lead the charge on innovation. What I would say is uh, if you want to make yourself a fortune and find some prosperity going forwards, try to tackle one of these big challenges that sits around the recyclability of particular products or their packaging. And that's all for Sustaining Australia TV for this episode. Keep an eye out for other episodes which will look at sustainability issues, the important role played by regional Australia and engaging communities, and the crucial area of traceability and provenance. We hope you can join us. But from me and from the team, it's goodbye for now.